Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Grilla Grills of Holland, Michigan, makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling or smoking skills. More information at grillagrills.com. By Tri-County Logging, experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silic, and we've got an exciting show for you this week. I'm going to introduce you to a young man who has an incredible passion for fishing and an incredible passion for life. You won't want to miss that story. And Jimmy and Jordan have some other exciting adventures in store for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. We're actually going to kick off this week's episode by doing a little fall turkey hunting, something that's a little overlooked here in the state of Michigan, but it is a ton of fun. We're also going to learn about the Great Lakes Fisheries Trust on this week's show and we're going to have time to show you a new deer hunting product that may just help you bring in that big buck that everyone's looking for this time of the year. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows. Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories. On the web at g5outdoors.com. To those who say we can't build a healthy economy while protecting the environment, DTE Energy has something to say. We're already doing it. Because you don't get to the forefront of cleaner, efficient energy by talking about it. DTE Energy. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. day in October and most people are probably out bow hunting but we're trying to do a little fall turkey hunting we're here with the turkey whisperer Mike Kennedy and uh, it sounded like the spring woods about 20 minutes ago there's hens talking gobblers gobbling it was all sounded there's a hen talking right there we're just hoping that this I don't know if they're flocked up yet or not we're just in an area where they like to roost, start our day off, and they st were talking quite a bit, but we'll see if they'll wander up here onto this point that we're on, but it's a beautiful day in October. The leaves are starting to turn. It's cool. It's perfect. I'll just see if we can get a bird to come in. Maybe they'll keep coming all the way to the decoys. The one's going this way right now that I can see. I can if, I mean, if I spin around, I can. If you can 
spin around and face that way. wasn't exactly how we drew it up. Well, maybe it was, because actually they came in from where we originally thought they were gonna come from. But we heard some goblin and some hens this way, so we spun around this, side, this giant tree. We spun around this side because we figured they were gonna come in here. We waited, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour, Mike, and he hit this gobble call and they were right behind us. So now we're trying to spin around the other side of the tree. So Mike's over here and Jordan had the, camera in front of him but he was taping behind him so when we said right it was his left and it was a whole fiasco but we I got spun around the tree and I didn't know Mike was gonna get ready to shoot and I'm getting ready to squeeze off and we shot gosh almost <laughs> almost the exact same time it was bang bang but looks like there's a couple birds I really I saw beards what do you what do you think Mike I mean they started to go over that hill yeah and then I reached in and got my little gobbler tube call and gobbled at him which isn't a great gobble but it it was good enough. They answered right back and they came right back up on the ridge and came right down, just right down that little trail towards us. I didn't think you could see them, so I thought, well, because well, this big tree, you were I set know, up on that side. We couldn't really communicate. I figured, well, and I could sort of see Jordan that he had him on camera, but it wasn't great, but it was about all, I mean, that was the moment of truth. I couldn't, <laughs> that, that was, was not, the, the worst part is, is it would have been perfect. Had we, we just stayed, stayed where we were, were. they would have come right in, but. But that was a different group of birds because as these birds were gobbling, these other birds gobbled down here and we could hear hens. And They will gobble in the fall and, and they're grouped up in groups that the toms are typically together and the hens are together yeah. with their young of the year. And it can be really vocal in the fall and uh, they're very callable. Yeah. Well, let's go, let's see go what check we got. them out. <laughs> I want to go see what we got. Good job. Here we go. He's got a nice beard too. <laughs> Nice job. <laughs> the old one-two punch. Jeez, what a fun morning. What a time. What are some tips if you're, you know, an average spring hunter and you want to try to give this a try? What should they do? Like, what did we do today to make this work? Well, you know, I kind of we came to this woods because I kind of know about where they roost in the spring. They always like to roost in that creek valley there. And I thought, okay. well, for to start off the first thing, it'd be, you know, I thought it'd be good for us to go to that spot close to a roost site. And if you've done a lot of scouting, you know where they're roost. That's definitely a plus because it's a lot easier to call them if you're right where the birds are at. Yeah. So we just sat there and he had to be patient. Just enjoy listening to the sounds. And I didn't call a lot. When the birds started sounding off, I started communicating back and forth with them. You know, they like to be together in groups. Yeah. In the fall, all, a lot of the, you know, there was like, there's four or five birds in this group. They're mm -hmm. all toms. And they like to be hanging out together. The, yeah. the males are together and the hens are together with their young poults and they can get real vocal you can get a communication talking back yelping back and forth or yeah. gobber yelping or gobbling at them hmm. and they'll interact back and forth and they'll call them right in it's it's uh it's, wow. it's great now you know, kind of that old the, the, the old method of go break up the flock run in there or i mean i only know a couple people that have ever had turkey dogs i know that's a typical way to hunt them in the fall, but you don't have to do it that way. Yeah, one of the traditional way of fall turkey hunting is to find a, a group of hens that have their young poults mm. and then to run in and scatter the flock and just scatter them all over the place. And you and then you sit down at the break site and try to call them back in. Yeah. Some people do it with dogs too, if you've got a trained dog, but not, not a lot of people have access to a good turkey dog. Yeah. And if you're like me, the older I get, the harder it is for me to go <laughs> running in and bust a flock up. I would rather just kind of just sit back and get close to the bird and then start interacting with them and just mm -hmm. relying on them wanting to be together with other birds and they hear you calling, they want to get, they have a tendency to want to get together. I think that's just a lot more enjoyable myself and yeah. it can be very vocal, like I said in the fall. I was really surprised. I mean, I've heard them, you know, out deer hunting and stuff like that, but I guess I've never really tried to work them like that uh -huh. and they just, 
Yeah, and you had lots of periods where you just weren't calling very much, and then you'd get real vocal and real uh -huh. loud and extended yelps like right. that. Okay. The long, drawn-out yelp is kind of like a lost call, lost hen yelp. And okay. It's a very common fall call where it's just a long, drawn-out yelp. Hmm. And then the gobbler uh, doing on that tube call, it doesn't sound like a real sweet gobble, but a lot of times the young birds, they don't, you know, yeah. they're not gobbling real good either, the young, huh. young gobblers. So it's good enough to fool them, you know. <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Well, special thanks to Mike for letting us tag along. He's one of the best turkey hunters we know, and it's always fun to get out and chase birds with him. And if you've never tried fall turkey hunting, you know what? You may just want to give it a try. It can be one heck of a day in the woods. This past spring at a fishing expo, Captain Joel Piatek met young J.D., who shares his same passion for musky fishing. Once he learned about J.D.'s challenging medical condition, he offered to take him out on a musky trip. A few weeks ago, we hit the waters of Lake St. Clair with a very special family. Steve and Brandy Sipneski were tagging along with their eight-year-old son, J.D., on a musky fishing trip. J.D. has been battling an inoperable brain tumor, and he's fought through three rounds of chemo, two surgeries, and many blood transfusions. When he wants to relax, J.D. loves to chase after muskies. Captain Joel, what's happening this morning? Beautiful day out, end of summer. Okay. Summer's winding down really quickly, but we're going out musky fishing today with JD and his family. Um, you know, it's been interesting. The uh, season has gone pretty good, but um, we're starting to see some pretty big fish nowadays. Once that water temperature started to change a little bit, drop, and also to the daylight hours um, shorten as well, should be a good musky fishing day. Okay. It looks like a beautiful day for it, eh? Certainly is. We got a light wind, nice little chop on the water. We should have some good water clarity, which is really good for our conditions. And uh, it's not so humid what we've seen all summer. <laughs> Where are we heading to? We're heading to the middle of the lake. We're going to fish the Canadian side of Lake St. Clair, um, which is holding some really good fish and it's got some really good water to, for uh, probably our most productive bites. J.D. has a passion for musky fishing. He especially likes how big everything tends to be, from the baits to the big fish that live here in Lake St. Clair. It, uh, it's about that time of the year that things start changing around, and when you get cool temperatures and some off-colored water like this right here, I tend to, I tend to treat it like fall, and uh, sometimes these big baits can pull out some nice fish. Well, it didn't take long to connect with the first fish of the day, and J.D. sprung into action to reel it in. What do you think you got here? Um, I don't know, probably a muskie. Small? I mean, probably. I don't know. J.D.'s taught a lot of us about uh, the, the real meaning of life, um, as he's got this lifelong battle, and has proved to be resilient more than most anybody, including us adults. Uh, every day is a fight. I don't think JD takes anything for granted, and I think he's taught his mom and I uh, what the true meaning of life is. And one of his big passions is nature, being outside with a fishing pole in his hand. And we were very, very fortunate for him to meet Captain Joel, uh, who's blessed us with two trips out on Lake St. Clair. And uh, I just love seeing that smile on his face. He's, he's had some not so fun times in his life. These are definitely some of the best times of his life. JD was waiting for a big musky and checking out Captain Joel's gear when we heard a rod go off. Down here, right buddy? Remember, we wanna have that down right here, somewhere right around there. There you go, all right. Let it take drag, let it take the drag. Is it falling, JD? Yeah. I really okay, like it because it's just neat how it works and it's really fun reeling them in and getting to hold them and stuff. That's your favorite part? Yeah. They pull a lot more on the rod and it's a lot harder fight than bass. They're pretty big. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Brandy? Um, I think hopefully it's a big one. <laughs> I love it. His heart's thumping, I'm sure. <laughs> it's a pretty big fish. Let's 
Lift it up, lift it up. I'm going back here. Little One more time. Right shoulder, this way, this way, this way. Okay, stop. Stop, stop. All right, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Jamie. Awesome. You got that yourself you. nice. Okay. Here, <laughs> here, you can let go. Nice job, Keith. Nice. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. That is a nice fish. All right. Want to settle in the tank so it can run. How's your arm feel? Nice job, Really sore. Really sore. That's what we came for. That's what we came for. Good job, buddy. 45 inches. 45 inches. Nice job. Oh, I think passion from fishing started when he was little, fishing up north with Grandpa. Um, has always loved it. I think for him, it's peaceful to be out fishing. It's kind of his peace. Yeah. Every day he inspires us. Just his outlook on life and everything he's been through and everything he continues to go through. And he's just an amazing fighter and he definitely inspires us. Nice job, JD. That's awesome, buddy. 45. Took us a little while to get this one, didn't it? Yeah. I wasn't gonna quit for you, buddy. All for you. All right. Things had been a little slow out here today. A lot of wind the night before had pushed some huge weed beds into the areas where Joel usually targets the muskie, making it a big challenge to connect with the fish. Joel worked hard to find a fish in subpar conditions today. This beautiful trophy was something to celebrate for many reasons, as Brandy explains. It makes us all just step back and appreciate every little thing in life. You just don't take anything for granted. What a great reminder from an incredible family. May we all be more like young J.D. Sipneski and appreciate the beauty and small victories in every moment we have here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, as you know, as a Michigander, we have a ton of great fishing opportunities around the state of Michigan. In this next story, we're going to learn a little bit about the Great Lakes Fisheries Trust and how that is funded and how it impacts you as a sportsman and woman here in the great state of Michigan. We're at the Ludington Pump Storage uh, Facility. It's a power generation plant owned by DTE and Consumers Energy. Uh, we've been in place uh, operational since 1973, uh, so 50 years. We just had our license renewed in the, uh, for another 50 years. So we generate power um, at this facility after uh, we store the water. So we pump water out of Lake Michigan and store it in an 840 acre reservoir, uh, which is roughly 350 feet above uh, Lake Michigan, up on the hill. Uh, when power is inexpensive and then when power um, prices are higher during the day in peak periods, we'll, we will release the water back down the hill uh, to power the generators. Again, same pipes uh, and same equipment, just in the opposite direction, uh, to generate power for uh, the grid and, and support of uh, you know, power uses and load in Michigan. This facility is very impressive, and since I grew up down the road from this place, it was cool to see it up close and personal. We'll get to why this place is so significant to Michigan anglers in a minute, but this place was really something to see. Or that time frame to go from zero speed, no load, we're not running at all, to synchronize to the grid takes us about three minutes from the time we push the start button, and then within the next three minutes, we can be at full power, 390 megawatts. The reason we were here today was to learn about the Great Lakes Fisheries Trust, an entity that was formed because of the impact this facility was having to the Lake Michigan fishery. I'm the chair of the Great Lakes Fisheries Trust. I took that over when I became the director of the Department of Natural Resources. And the Great Lakes Fisheries Trust was established to compensate the people of the state of Michigan and sport anglers in particular for, for losses or fish damage as a result of the Ludington Pump Storage Facility where we're at right now. So the Fisheries Trust receives money from uh, fish damage payments that we receive from consumers and DTE, and that happens once a year. Uh, so we add that to sort of our corpus or you know the main the main amount of funds that we have in our trust, and then we grant we make grants of uh, about two to three million dollars a year out for a variety of different uh, fisheries related projects. For 20 years, the trust has done work all over the state, like this facility just miles from the plant, making sure that folks can access our fishery. Over 60 grants have been given out and millions of dollars spent because of the fish loss. The barrier net runs from surface to bottom. It has uh, over 100 anchor points. 
and considerable flotation. Um, we're actually right now we're looking at improving the uh, barrier net with different stronger materials that have been proposed by our net manufacturer that will allow us to actually put more anchor points in and increase flotation to combat submergence and net lifting, which is a problem. The barrier net is, is about 85 to 90 percent effective, but there is passage that gets through it primarily from submergence from the high flows of the power plant. So the barrier net monitoring program here is uh, we have a consultant go out uh, twice a week during the season, and that's April through October. Uh, they set nets inside and outside the net, the barrier net. They, they set those at night, and so we go out at night with them while they set. And then in the morning, they pick the nets, and we go out in the morning with them and pick the nets. They take them back to a processing facility here at the plant, uh, and they go through and they process all the fish samples, size, species. And so we, we sit with them and make sure that they're doing the right thing. Uh, in the scientific advisory team, they go through and they agree upon that final number. And then documents are signed and that money goes into the trust. It's good to see companies working with the DNR and this whole facility here doing what they can to minimize the fish loss. Many anglers and boaters have seen the benefits of the Great Lakes Fisheries Trust without even knowing it. To see communities on Lake Michigan and around the state benefiting from the trust is really pretty impressive. Within the Fisheries Trust, we put a lot of effort and a lot of money over the last 20 years into providing uh, more and better access for the people of the state of Michigan to be able to go out uh, and, and be able to use Lake Michigan, uh, have uh, onshore and nearshore fishing opportunities. Um, that's been a big focus of the trust is trying to create um, all those different access points. Um, and we have kind of an, an objective of trying to have uh, fisheries access to Lake Michigan and every community along the shoreline. Uh, we've got some work to do yet on that, but, but we've made uh, a tremendous amount of progress in reconnecting people with the water that we have here in Michigan. Special thanks to all involved in letting us see what this place does and for sharing with us the importance of the Great Lakes Fishery Trust. There are literally hundreds and thousands of anglers using boat launches and fishing docks that came from the dollars generated right here. And if you're ever south of Ludington and north of Pentwater and see the sunrise from a fishing boat, well, you're looking right at the place that is impacting sportsmen and women here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, from time to time, we get some products sent to us here at the television show, and if we think there's some real interest that sportsmen and women may really want to take a peek at it, we'll put it on the program. Well, that's exactly what happened in this next story. Hi, I'm Dave Rome, and I'm here today to talk to you about a product that I developed and want to share it with you. It's for scrape hunting for white-tailed deer. It's for making uh, mock scrapes, and it really enhances how you're going to hunt mock scrapes. The product is to hold a branch so that you can put the scrape where you want the deer to come, not where there's only a suitable branch in the woods. I have two products, one that goes on a T-post and you can put that anywhere out in a food plot. You can put it in the middle of woods where there's not a suitable tree. You can put it on a two track off to the side. You can just put it anywhere where there's nothing available for you for a uh, perfect branch hanging over for a scrape. The other one I've developed is also to go on a tree, goes on a wooden post, could go on a rubbing post, anywhere that you can attach it to a tree. It attaches with a strap. The one inch strap goes through, goes around the tree, and it's an endless strap. Comes back into the ratchet itself, you tighten that up, and it is very secure. The reason for the strap is there's a lot of people out there that don't want to penetrate the tree, or if you're hunting on state land and you cannot uh, penetrate the tree, this makes it legal for that. Once the base is secure, you uh, want to attach your tube. The tube is attached by just a two inch bolt with a washer. Put that through. You don't have to uh, tighten it up all the way yet. You're going to go and you're going to find yourself a nice branch. I prefer a good six to ten foot long branch. Give those deer something that they can really work over. Well, special thanks to Dave for showing us his new product. And with the new baiting laws, this may be a new tactic for your bag of tricks when it comes to trying to attract trophy deer to your area. 
If you'd like more information on Dave's product, we'll have his contact information in the credits of the show. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you join us again next week. We've got some exciting bow hunting action in store for you. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com or on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By EOTech, a Michigan company, equipping law enforcement and sportsmen alike with quality optics, creating jobs for Michigan workers. On the web at eotechgear.com. By Jay Sporting Goods, with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's has been serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiasts since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jay's. On the web at jaysportinggoods.com. Closed captioning provided by Randy's Hunting Center, serving Michigan as Ruger and Leupold's National Dealer of the Year, an inventor of Ruger's 450 Bushmaster rifle. When I want to fire away I am a Michigan man Changing seasons paint the scene Like rainbow trout in a hidden stream The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan 